Good afternoon. It is a wonderful public holiday here in Sydney, Australia. It's the Queen's birthday public holiday. It's not her actual birthday, but we're celebrating it anyway. I want to start with this uh, little trick that I learned throughout the week. Uh, so I went for a couple of runs and forgot my heart rate monitor. Now, ordinarily, I would just stop my run and go home, get my heart rate monitor, and then start the run because, you know, if you don't have your heart rates logged, did it even happen? And I do find that the heart rate monitor strap works so much better than the wrist heart rate monitor. Those little lights under the watch, they just don't accurately represent my heart rate at all. So what you do with your Garmin is you move it a little bit back from that bone in your wrist so that it gets a nice flat surface on your arm and then tighten it up, but Watch out, you don't do that. So what I have managed to do is snap the wrist strap on my Garmin. Um, I tightened it a bit too much. So while you can do this to get around using a heart rate monitor strap around your chest, just be very careful of tightening it up too much. You want to have it quite tight because the tighter that this is against your wrist, the better that it's going to measure your heart rate and this measures uh, the light so it measures um, I believe it's the pressure within your wrist so the actual color of the blood flow and everything within your wrist and that measures the heart rate I could be completely wrong about that but that's my understanding so the tighter you have it against your arm the more it's going to accurately measure it but the best solution of course is just don't do it up too tight do it tight but not too tight that it breaks. And I learned that the hard way. So now, unfortunately for my runs, I just unclip this and just carry it with me on my runs. And of course, use my heart rate monitor strap every time. And I am ordering a new strap for my Garmin, but unfortunately it's taking a few days because you know I, there's nowhere I can find physically that I can buy a strap for my Garmin. So I've got to order it via eBay and that takes several days to send across to me. So I'm without Garmin strap for a little while. So this week I've already done all my runs and cycles and everything. Uh, today is actually a nice little rest day for me. So I decided to go out for a bit of a walk. Uh, and today walking around sort of the Glebe Point Wentworth Park sort of area. I don't come out here that often. But it's a really nice spot to go for a walk around. But being a public holiday, of course, half of Sydney is here as well. And this weekend, once again, because uh, it's been a fortnight, two weeks since my last plasma donation, I was allowed to donate plasma again on Saturday. So did that, that's great. Got that plasma out of me and hopefully into people who need it. And another little PSA there, if you have the means to be able to donate blood, plasma, platelets, then get out there and donate. It's a really good thing to do. And people who need it, really need it. And then following my plasma donation, uh, you may have seen all around the world there have been lots of protests in regards to the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, there was one in Sydney. Um, I was donating plasma at three o'clock at Town Hall in the city. The protest started at three o'clock at Town Hall in the city, so perfect timing. Unfortunately that meant that I missed a lot of the talks and speeches by people at the start, but I managed to catch the protest and the march all through Sydney. And yes, of course, I was trying to be as safe as possible, uh, trying to keep social distancing from other people, wearing my mask, hand sanitizer, all that sort of thing. Uh, and another a bit annoying thing that happened well, that I found out this week anyway, is that, so this year was going to be my year of getting my Guinness World Record title back for the fastest marathon run in a Kung Fu uniform, um, specifically running in these Kung Fu slippers. But unfortunately, due to the whole COVID coronavirus situation, they've decided to cancel the Guinness World Record attempt this year. They're coming back next year in 2021, but 2020, there's going to be no Guinness World Record representative, and therefore I can't do my Guinness World Record attempt this year, which is frustrating because uh, it means it's another year and a half until I can get my record back. So I'm going to use this next year and a half as really intense training uh, to get myself into the perfect position to run a really fast marathon. Now to do that, I am going to be doing a lot of very slow training. So low heart rate, low pace training. 
specifically what's called the MAF or MAFETONE method of training, where you train under, um, it's a really low, like out of the five zones you've got, it's like halfway through zone two or within your zone two of training and you run at that pace and that builds up your aerobic threshold or whatever it is, your lower base heart rate so that you can run longer events faster at a lower heart rate and therefore do a better time. And I think that is gonna be my answer to getting back my Guinness World Record title and holding it for as long as I possibly can. Another thing I'm doing, because I've really got to cut the kilos, is I've started doing a no sugar or low sugar movement. So uh, I watched a movie called That Sugar Film. Very good movie if you get a chance to watch it. And of course they've got a Facebook page and they've got this challenge this month um, for the month of June is to try and stay under six teaspoons of sugar, added sugars per day. Now that's about 25 grams of added sugars. So if you look at a packet of uh, processed food or pre-prepared food or something like that, and it's got you know, like carbohydrates and then under that it's got sugars, you look at that sugars amount. So all this idea of reducing sugar is based on, so there was a study, I think it was 30, 40, 50 years ago, whatever it was, uh, which was called the diet heart hypothesis, where they found that fats were potentially causing health conditions. And so that's what created the food pyramid that you may have seen when growing up, uh, where it says like at the very top of the pyramid, eat a very few amount of fats, um, then eat lots of proteins and eat a significant amount of carbohydrates and sugars. Now, unfortunately, that's upside down uh, because when they changed that, they reduced a lot of foods, started becoming low fat foods. And in order to continue the same amount of flavor within the food, they eliminate the fat and they had to increase the amount of sugar to create that flavor and get that flavor and have people enjoying their food. Um, and when they did that, of course, we see a massive spike in the amount of added sugars in people's foods. And there's a bit of a coincidence that right at that time, there was a massive spike, spike in obesity and all sorts of other health issues. And not all sugars are bad. I mean, the sugars that are in fruits and that sort of thing, um, if you extract them and have them as concentrated, yes, they're bad. But if you eat them with the natural fibers that they come with in the fruit themselves, that offsets the sugars and keeps you satiated and stops you from having too many. And so in that moderation, they are good sugars. The problem is when you have concentrated and excessive amounts of added sugars, just adds to your waistline. And as a bit of an analysis of my diet over the last few months, yes, I have been eating way too many sugars, adding in way too many sugars to my lifestyle. So I'm cutting that out and trying to especially cook a lot of my own foods, because then I know exactly what's going into them. And it's not gonna be a crazy fast process. It is gonna be a slow process, but hopefully I expect to see the kilos, especially the waistline, just get smaller. And really we shouldn't be cutting out the fats from our diet. Fats are surprisingly a lot better for you than you think. That food pyramid with fats being minimal, sugars being a lot, that's backwards. It should be a lot more the other way around. Anyway, that about does it for me this week. Thanks for watching. If you want more swim, bike, run and exercise content every week from here in Australia, then hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.